were out an extra couple hundred dollars for the food and shuttle, we spent about 2,000 on flights and rooms for the weekend. Oh, Ooh, that gave me goosebumps. Oh no, no, no. There's a word we're not supposed to use in this sub. It begins with T and ends in app. Hey everybody, my name's Katie Sauter. I'm an engineer by day and a wedding planner by night. And I'm going to dive into some Reddit stories where we're going to look at some of this drama and if we can't learn anything, we're going to actually like give it the big fat Sauter sealer of failure. We have got invited to a wedding where guests are responsible for their own food. All right, not looking good for for learning anything here. I just wanna be clear that I am not trying to criticize my friend's wedding. Does it sound outside the norm? Yes, but then again, I don't know too much about weddings myself. So I just want to learn with an open mind and understand why my friends, the bride and groom, decided on a certain way. Husband is the best man at this wedding. I am just a guest. The wedding is on a Saturday, but the reception is the day before on a Friday, which is a little weird, but like that's, that's not too unheard of. It's pretty common nowadays for weddings to actually span multiple days, or at least the activities, like it could be brunch or party the night before, whatever. The reception on Friday is for family only. And the bridal party, meaning we'll be there because my hubby is the best man, but most wedding guests aren't invited to this. Then the wedding is on Saturday at 3 p.m. Then after the wedding, at 7 p.m. there's an after party where guests are responsible for their own food and beverages. Honestly, so far this actually doesn't seem that bad because if they're calling it an after party and they've had the reception the day before, is I'm not convinced this is that bad. This is their day, you know? The last part surprised me a little. I've always been told that you should thank guests for coming by treating them appetizers and beverages at the very least but the STD is very clear that guests are responsible for their own food. Wait, hold on, what, what does STD mean? I can only think of one thing and it's, it's not PG. Oh, hello, my cat wants to join. I don't know if she's in the camera, but she wants to join. Oh wait, okay, All right, we're at STD. We're gonna Google that. Oh, I'm a wedding planner, I should know this, but STD means save the date. Oh, my mind was not there. We have a cat now. Hello, are you going to behave? Are you going to think about it? No, okay. That's Raja. So save the date is very clear that guests are responsible for their own food. Since my husband is part of the bridal party, we both attend the Friday reception anyway, so it doesn't seem as bad for us since the bride and groom would be paying for our food that day. This is all not seeming that bad to me. It seems it seems different and uncommon, but it doesn't like it doesn't scream anything crazy to me. But I feel for the guests who are not family and the bridal party, meaning they aren't invited on Friday and have to show up for the wedding on Saturday and be responsible for their own food afterwards. Okay? The bride and groom don't owe you anything. They have their party at three o'clock. Maybe this is controversial opinion, but if the party is ending at seven, I think they have every right to be like, you know what, sorry guys, we can't afford to feed everyone. It's not traditional, it's not common, but that's my opinion so far. Let's see if there's anything else that pops up. Does this sound outside the norm to you? Yes. Yes, it sounds outside the norm. This is strange. This, I, do, I, I wouldn't do this. But we don't know what the bride and groom, what their financial situation looks like, and if they're ending the party at seven, I think it's perfectly reasonable to be like, Hey guests, sorry, we're going to have dance and fun and maybe something else. I am guessing that it's not my place to say anything since others can decide for themselves if they want to come. I am really happy for my friends for getting married and wouldn't want to give unsolicited advice. My hot take is this isn't so bad. I think because the party ends at seven, they are all set. Feel free to leave your own opinion in the comments below. But let's move on, see what Reddit has said. I wouldn't do this as a bride. It feels rude to your guests and like you're outsourcing costs of a wedding onto guests. OP needs to check the invitation or website for details unless it's not stated, which would be poor communication. 
having guests pay for their own drinks is fine. Having guests pay for their meal is not. If you can't afford a full meal for your guests, then do an early afternoon wedding and have a quick cake and punch reception afterwards that ends before five so that guests don't expect a meal. If your reception is during a meal time, you need to pay for their meal. This is a really good point. I still think, maybe it's because I eat late sometimes. I'm frequently cooking until like 7.30. But for me, I'm like, yeah, I would still attend this wedding personally. I think it's definitely a good point that probably between five and seven, most people like to eat and uh, probably you should provide food, at least a snack. I think like providing appetizers isn't too hard to do. You can get catering for not too expensive for just appetizers. Cowgirl train wreck. That's a fantastic name. They said, at least they told you ahead of time. So true, at least they're giving you a heads up. Years ago, I was a bridesmaid in a destination wedding for a friend. No one had any idea we were expected to pay for our own food, drink, shuttle, everything at the restaurant reception. Ooh, oh, oh, that's bad. Wait, what, what? Really? Oh no, yeah, no, that's not good. That's, that's not good. Oh my god, what? I'm just curious, but what did you do? Were there any upset guests? Cowgirl Trainwreck wrote, We just quietly paid for our <laughs> and it soured the friendship. I haven't hung out with her since the wedding like seven years ago. It was very small, basically just the parents and the bridal party. The other bridesmaids were very surprised too. We spent so much money traveling to Vegas for it and hardly any thanks at all for it. Yeah, that's a tough one. At the end of the weekend, the groom gave us a half-hearted, thanks for paying for our wedding. We know we kind of pushed off on all of you. So they knew what they were doing. Oh, how much did it end up being? Someone asked. I can't remember exactly anymore, but I think we were out an extra couple hundred dollars for the food and shuttle. We spent about 2,000 on flights and rooms for the weekend. Oh, that's a tough one. Hot take, I think that if you have a wedding, you should probably be feeding guests. The original post, I think, I think that's fine because it ends at seven unless there's like some sort of break, in which case like maybe guests could get dinner before the after party this i think is okay and honestly a feasible way to actually save money so i think we did learn something wow this one doesn't get the solder seal of failure the the one comment though where they're like i want to spend thousands that gets the solder seal of failure those people mm. okay shameless plug time I have a freebie wedding timeline that's down in the description below i can't really prepare you for some of this crap but check it out join my newsletter Shameless plug time over. Ecstatic pterodactyl writes. I'll criticize your friend. This is very rude. Is she even providing a venue, DJ, etc.? Or is she just making a group reservation at a restaurant? Every once in a while, someone will pop up with this ingenious idea to make everything an after party so guests can just pay for themselves. But it's not ingenious. It's disingenuous and rude. These are your guests. You're supposed to host them and provide refreshments, not leave them with a three hour gap and tell them to pay for themselves. It's one thing to have an evening reception after a meal time and provide apps and drinks or something to be budget conscious. It's another to just be cheap. Know what I mean? Coke Yummy says, Agreed, I often try to consider all circles, socioeconomic situations, customs, etc. But this is just rude. My husband's brother and wife got married super small. It was in a small private room of a nice restaurant and only immediate family was there for ceremony and dinner. Afterwards, we went over to their favorite bar and their friends met up and we partied. This was later at night, well after dinner and wasn't treated like a reception. The bar wasn't closed uh, or reserved or anything like that. And the friends that met us hadn't just sat through a ceremony or given gifts or anything like that. There was no thank you necessary. Having people attend your ceremony, go home for three hours and then come back out and pay for their own food. Ooh, that, that's a good point too. Your guests are giving you gifts, so maybe it's probably better to be paying for their food too. I understand though, not everyone has the budget for it. One way you can actually get around this is to have a potluck. Just make it like 
a big family thing where you're like, I can't afford any food, so what I'm gonna do is just have a bottle up. You can do that. A lot of people might disagree that that's, that's not the way to do it, but there are budget conscious ways to do things. I still feel like my opinion holds. I, I Maybe I'm less harsh than some of these people online, but I don't think that the bride and groom really had to, especially since there's a break. Yeah, it's cheap. I'm gonna say it, it's cheap, but not everyone is in the same boat. Not everyone can afford the catering for however many guests they're going to have. Good T2332 says, there's a word we're not supposed to use in this sub. It begins with T and ends in Aki. But I think this is a special scenario where it definitely applies. You can't have a wedding and then not feed people afterwards. Oh, I definitely have a controversial opinion here. Major breach of etiquette. And technically nobody is obligated to give a gift even if they were serving filet mignon and dom perignon. If I were OP, I wouldn't give a gift. Oh, that gave me goosebumps. Oh no, 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 they're still your, do you care about your relationships? I, no, I, mm -mm, mm, no, I would still give a gift. <laughs> Maybe that's me. Maybe I'm just too nice. I don't know. OP's husband being in the wedding party is gift enough. Okay. Okay, I can see that one. That's a good argument. But if he weren't in the wedding party, I wouldn't go at all. Honestly, Maybe this is a controversial opinion. I like the ceremony. They get one day. They get one day. And if you are like, I expect to be fed, which I would say that is definitely true if they had a full like length of time. I wouldn't go to the one the one wedding that maybe y'all have heard about where they they were like, yeah, we're gonna spend thirty thousand dollars to get Mickey and Minnie at our wedding at the reception, and we just won't have any food for catering. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I wouldn't go to that. Even though we learned very little about actually planning a wedding today, I also sell an ebook which can help you plan your wedding if you're in that process. But if you're here to just have fun, I have some stories about some wedding vendors who actually want to fire their clients. And that's in this video right here. Something like this in this direction. Boop that like button and kiss that subscribe. Keep it PG for me, okay?